Welcome back to the course on computer network and uh, internet protocols. So, we are looking into the details of uh, transmission control protocol or uh, TCP. Uh, so, in this lecture, uh, we will look into the details of uh, TCP connection establishment and how TCP chooses the initial sequence number uh, based on the concept that we discussed earlier and then in the subsequent lectures, so we will go to the flow control mechanism in TCP in details. So, uh, TCP connection establishment, it is a QA handshaking based mechanism. Uh, it is utilizes a special connection request message called SYN, a short form for synchronization. Uh, we call it as TCP SYN message. So, the connection establishment using QA handshaking mechanism that is something like this, like uh, host A and uh, host B uh, wants to communicate with each other. So, when host A and host B wants to communicate with each other host A initiates the connection establishment. So, host A sends a SYN message with certain initial sequence number. So, in a moment we will discuss that how TCP chooses this initial sequence number. So, it sends a SYN message with the initial sequence number as x. Then host B sends an acknowledgement message along with also a SYN message. Uh, so, this SYN message from host B to host A, uh, it is used to uh, ensure the bidirectional connection in TCP. So, if you remember in the last class, we have talked about that TCP connection is bidirectional. So, host A can communicate with host B at the same time host B can also communicate with host A. And uh, because of this reason, uh, host B also sends a SYN packet with an initial sequence number. So, here in this example, uh, host B sends this SYN message while sending back the act. So, we are basically piggybacking SYN and ACT together. Piggybacking means we are combining two messages together. Uh, in terms of TCP header, you need to set bit 1 for both the SYN flag and um, for the ACT flag. So, this SYN plus ACT message, it is sending a new initial sequence number. So, this sequence number Y, uh, it will be used for B to A data transfer and the earlier proposed sequence number from A to B that is X will be used for A to B data transfer and in acknowledge with this X. So, it sends acknowledgement number of X plus 1. Now, if you remember the connection establishment procedure through a handshaking mechanism that we discussed earlier in the case of general uh, transport layer service model, host A can see this message, host A can find out that whether the acknowledgement number it corresponds to the SYN message that it has transmitted and if it corresponds to the SYN message that is transmitted, it takes this SYN plus X as a feasible one or a valid one and then it sends a acknowledgement message finally to B and in that acknowledgement message, it sends a sequence number of X plus 1 incrementing the previous sequence that it has initiated and acknowledges this uh, acknowledgement number Y plus 1. So, with this three-way handshaking mechanism, host A and host B initiate the connection. Now, the question is that how will you choose the initial sequence number? So, choosing the initial sequence number is an important aspect that we have looked into uh, the generic discussion of uh, transport layer service models. So, while choosing the initial sequence number, the objective is to avoid the delay duplicate so that you can identify a message by looking into your sequence number whether that message is a delayed duplicate or it is just like the application has crashed and the application has initiated another connection at the same port with a different sequence number. So, to do that what you need to ensure that well uh, the initial sequence number that you are choosing that initial sequence number should not fall within the forbidden region of the previous sequence number. Now, how will you ensure that to ensure that earlier we have seen that well whenever you are choosing the initial sequence number, uh, you have two way to choose the initial sequence number. So, just try to remember the concepts that uh, we discussed earlier. So, just briefly explaining it again for your convenience. So, uh, whenever you are choosing this initial sequence number, so this is the time axis and this is the sequence number axis. Uh, so, this was the earlier connection, if this was the earlier connection, then uh, this was say the forbidden region for this particular connection. So, this is the this is connection 1 and this is the forbidden region for connection 1. 
now whenever you are initiating a new connection uh, say uh, at this point connection 1 got uh, crashed here. So, once connection 1 got crashed you want to initiate a new connection and whenever you are initiating a new connection you need to ensure that you are not starting the new connection say this is your new connection connection 2 you are not starting this connection 2 at a point such that the forbidden region for connection 2 overlaps with connection 1. So, this we do not want. So, to prevent that what we do that uh, yeah to prevent that we want to initialize connection 2 such that these two forbidden region does not overlap with each other. Now, to, to, to do that you have two options the first option is uh, uh, the first option is uh, just yeah. So, the first option is uh, you you make a uh, make a shift at the time domain and the second option is that you make a uh, shift at the connection establishment uh, domain that means at the sequence number domain. So, the first step is that you start it after giving a gap. So, this is connection 2. So, you, you start it after giving a gap so that this gap will ensure that the sequence number space do not overlap. So, you wait for certain amount of time to ensure that all the packets for connection 1 which was transmitted in the network they have died off and no traces of that those are there in the network and then only you try a new connection. Otherwise the option is that you choose a initial sequence number in such a way which will be high enough. So, there would be a difference here from the last sequence number which is used by connection 1 and the new sequence number that you are using from connection 2. So, there is a difference here such that you will be able to ensure that this sequence number space which was being used by connection 1 you are not going to use that sequence number space for the connection 2 uh, for the data of connection 2. Now, TCP uses the second principle. So, TCP ensures that whenever a connection say connection 1 crashes. So, this was connection 1 whenever connection 1 crashes whenever you are starting connection 2 you choose the connection 2 the initial sequence number of connection 2 in such a way that there is a gap in between. So, this is for connection 2 there is a gap in between and there is no overlap between the sequence number which is being used by connection 1 and which is being used by uh, connection 2. So, for that uh, TCP uses a clocking mechanism. So, TCP generates the sequence number based on a clock. So, that was the first implementation of TCP or the earlier version of the TCP. It used the sequence it used to generate the sequence number based on a clock mechanism. So, the methodology was something like this. So, this original implementation of TCP it used a clock based approach. So, the clock ticked every 4 microsecond. So, whenever the clock is ticking you are generating a new sequence number if you have a byte to send uh, and the value of the clock it cycles from 0 to 2 to the power 32 minus 1. So, you remember the TCP uses a 32 bit sequence number. So, your entire sequence number space is 0 to 2 to the power 32 minus 1. So, that means that every 4 microsecond you are generating a new sequence number and uh, whenever a connection crashes and re get restarted then you will use uh, the sequence number which is being generated by the clock. So, that is used for generating the initial sequence number then the sequence number will increment it based on the bytes that you are receiving and you are transmitting based on your flow control and the congestion control algorithm. So, this value of the clock it gives the initial sequence number which will be being used. So, with this clock based mechanism what you are ensuring that means, whenever a previous connection say get crashed here the connection get crashed here and you are restarting the connection by the time um, the clock value will increase and because the clock value is increasing you will obviously get a initial sequence number here which has certain gap from the sequence number field which was used by the previous connection. So, you will start from here and uh, you will be able to ensure that the forbidden region of the sequence number which is being used by connection 2. So, this is connection 2 that is not overlap with the forbidden region of connection 1. Now, um, with this particular approach 
uh, we have a problem like this sequence number generation becomes little bit deterministic. So, uh, if you know that well the clock is ticking at every 4 microsecond and at every 4 microsecond you are generating a new sequence number that means an attacker will be able to understand by looking into the previous sequence numbers that uh, what is the clock tick rate current clock tick rate and uh, when uh, the previous connection got crashed how much time has been passed in between uh, divided by the 4 microsecond that should be the initial sequence number of the next connection. If that is the possible uh, that is the case then there is a possibility of uh, scene flood attack which can happen uh, in case of TCP. So, in case of TCP the scene flood attack is that you are continuously sending this kind of spurious scene connection to a node and that particular node will accept those connection at a genuine connection and they will get um, a block there because they will think of that that particular initial sequence number which is being generated uh, it is it is indeed a correct initial sequence number based on my clock input. Uh, so, it will accept those scene connection and if you are sending multiple such scene connections from multiple computers that translates to a denial of service attack. So, the computer and the server will only become busy to response to the scene packets, it will not be able to send any data packet any further. So, that is the possibility of a scene flooding attack to launch a denial of service over TCP. So, that is why uh, the latter version of the TCP or indeed the current version of the TCP what it does that it uses a cryptographic function to generate the initial sequence number. So, it is like that your clock value will give one, one uh, function, one value. So, say the clock value is saying that your initial sequence number should be x. If your initial sequence number is x, then you apply a cryptographic function to generate the initial sequence number such that your initial sequence number y it is more than x and because this is generated from a cryptographically secured function. So, the attacker will not be able to predict the value of y. So, that way you are ensuring that well in case of a previous connection when the connection got crashed here and you are trying to generate a new sequence number your clock value says that you should generate the new sequence number from this point, but then uh, whenever you are restarting a connection you should generate it from this point, but then the cryptographic hash function generates another value which is more than this particular point say for at here and you are starting your new connection from that point. So, that way it will ensure because you are going higher of that it will ensure that there is no overlap between the forbidden region of this new connection and the forbidden region of this old connection and at the same time because this value was cryptographically generated the attacker will not be able to guess that. So, that way you will be able to uh, safeguard the scene flood attack uh, in a TCP. Okay. Now, TCP connection release it again uses the three way handshaking mechanism. So, we have uh, two hosts host A and host B. Now, host A want to close the connection when host A wants to clo close the connection and uh, it initiates this connection closer we call it as an active close. So, in case of active close host A will send a fin message fin is the full form of finish. So, you want to close the connection send a fin message with the current sequence number and the current acknowledgement number. Then host B once it receives the fin message it again go to the close connection closer with this passive close. So, in the passive close um, it sends a fin message uh, it sends an acknowledgement message to this fin. So, that host A can close the connection in that acknowledgement it acknowledges this fin message with m plus 1 and at the same time it host B wants to close the connection itself. So, this fin message from host A to host B it is closing the connection from A to B. Now, if B wants to close the connection as well. So, we have a bidirectional connection B, uh, also B to A. Now, if B wants to close this connection B sends this fin message. Uh, if B does not want to close it immediately then what we can do that we can only sense the acknowledgement message and later on when it wants to um, when it wants to uh, close the connection it can sense the its own fin message that is also possible. Now, um, once host A receives this acknowledgement message it starts a timeout. This timeout is to prevent uh, this uh, data loss due to the symmetric nature of the closure. So, if you remember we have uh, looked into earlier that um, 
asymmetric closure uh, inside and unreliable network is not possible. So, we want to implement a, a symmetric closure with a timeout value. So, this timeout value ensures that well if you are still receiving some packets from B, then you can continue receiving that packet once this timeout occurs, you completely close that connection, you will not accept any packet after that. Even if you may get certain packets after that, but those packet will get lost, you cannot do anything with those packets. And uh, once similarly host is sending the acknowledgement message against a fin message or fin plus acknowledgement message sent by host B and it updates the acknowledgement number accordingly against this uh, sequence number and sends back the acknowledgement to host B. So, host B then closes the connection and do not send any data. So, you can see that the timeout is here in case of the active close, but for passive close we do not require any timeout because that is the last entity which is going to close. Um, uh, we require this timeout for the active close because it may happen that uh, when host A is initiated this closure, um, host A after getting the acknowledgement, host A can still receive some data from host B because host B has not sent any, um, any fin message uh, with it. Uh, or even if it has sent a fin message, it may happen that because of this reordering of the packet, you may receive certain packets after that. So, we apply this timeout mechanism uh, at the active close side, but at the passive close side, we do not require the timeout because in the passive close side, whenever you are getting an acknowledgement from host A, you know that host A has already closed its connection, host A has uh, sent the fin message itself. So, it is just like that your friend has closed the door and your friend has not uh, do not want you to enter the enter his room. So, you do not know, want to wait anymore. Uh, so, so that is the reason here that uh, host A has already initiated that finish message. So, host A has will not send any more data host B knows that. So, for the passive close case you do not need to wait for that timeout value. Whereas, for the active close case because I am forcefully trying to close the connection. So, I am giving an opportunity for the other end to send few more data to me if it wants. So, that is why uh, we have this timeout value here. Now, as you have looked earlier for other hypothetical transport layer protocol that this uh, entire transport layer protocol follows a state transition diagram. So, we also have a state transition diagram for TCP. So, let us look into the state transition diagram of TCP in little details because that is the important concept uh, for uh, TCP. So, this entire state transition uh, procedure start from this closed state that means the server and the client uh, both of them are uh, closed. Uh, so, they, they are they have not started any TCP socket yet. So, these are the notation that uh, you see that everything is written by um, one message slash another message. So, this is the event action pair. So, the first one is the event and the second one is the action. Then this dashed line is for the server. So, this dashed line which is being followed that is for the server and the solid line is for the uh, TCP client. So, the client um, as we know that in a client server based model, the server remains in the listen state for uh, getting a connection, uh, getting a connection request from a client. So, the client initiates the connection request. Uh, and uh, once connects, uh, client receives a, sends a connection request and the server receives it, it start processing with that connection. So, let us see that how this entire thing moves uh, using the, this uh, state transition diagram, using TCP state transition diagram. So, from this closed state, uh, let us first look into the client side. So, the client initiate a connect system call and sends a scene message. So, that is the first step of the three-way handshaking procedure. And then the client moves to the scene sent state. So, at this state the client has sent a scene message and it is waiting for the acknowledgement from the server. Now, from this scene state sent state uh, client can decide after sending the scene that I do not want to send any more data or want to immediately close the connection. So, it may use a close message to close the connection immediately and move to the closed state. So, whenever it is in the closed state uh, even if the server receives a scene message and send back with an acknowledgement, it will not accept that acknowledgement, it will simply drop that acknowledgement and it will um, uh, not send any more data because it is in the closed state. 
and uh, the server will wait for some amount of time, get a timeout and again move to the closed state. Um, so, that is uh, for the uh, scene send state. Now, after you have sent the scene, then uh, you can uh, you can uh, in the in the three way handshaking mechanism from the client to server first you have to send the scene message then you will receive an act from the server along with a scene from the server as well and finally you will send the act message so here in the second stage you have received a scene plus act message from the server so once you have received this uh, scene plus acknowledgement message from the server, then um, you send an acknowledgement message and move to the established state. Similarly, the server from the closed state, it first makes this listen system call and moves to the listen state. So, at the listen state, it is ready to receive any connection establishment message. So, once it receives a scene message, it sends back with a scene plus acknowledgement message. So, this is the second step of the three-way handshaking mechanism. So, the server has received the scene message and then sending a uh, scene plus acknowledgement message and this is the third step of the three-way handshaking where the client is receiving the scene plus act from server and sending back with a final acknowledgement. And once the um, client has done that, client is moving to the established state and it is ready for data transfer. Now, uh, from this listen state, again uh, the server can execute a close and close the connection immediately. Uh, when the server has received the send mas scene message and send back a scene plus acknowledgement message, server moves to the scene receive state. So, from the scene receive state, it can make a reset call and reset the connection to the listen state. So, this reset call is that the server somehow decides that it do not want to continue that connection anymore uh, that is sometime required to prevent the attack whenever you are receiving multiple scene messages from the same client like a scene flooding thing to prevent that you can have a reset call or maybe for some application requirement or based on the application programming or certain exception in the application uh, side you want to reset the existing connection. So, from the scene received you can call a reset call and again move to the reset listen state and ignore this uh, scene that you have already received. Now, there is there can be one case where both the server and the client are initiating the connection together. So, in that case that is we call as a simultaneous open. So, it is just like that from the server and client, the client has sent the scene and at the same time the server has also sent a scene. So, if that is the case like you are getting a scene message. Uh, from the server, the client is getting a scene message from the server because ideally the client should send a scene and after that the client should get a scene plus acknowledgement. But if the it is just getting the uh, scene message from the server, it sends a scene plus acknowledgement message and the client can also move to the scene receive state. So, it is just like that um, uh, you have sent a scene message to the server, but rather than getting a scene plus acknowledgement the acknowledgement to the scene that you have sent, you are getting a, a scene message and not the acknowledgement message. So, you are the client is moving to the scene receive state. At this stage, uh, whenever you are getting an acknowledgement message, you are moving towards the established state. So, the server is moving, server is getting this acknowledgement final acknowledgement message for the three way handshaking and it is moving to the established state. So, that way uh, through this procedure everyone is moving towards the established state and if from this established state the data transfer can get initiated. Uh, so, this is for the connection establishment of, uh, uh, of uh, TCP uh, that it moves through this multiple states and finally, reaches to the established state when you can initiate uh, uh, data transfer. Now, the data transfer can go on based on the principle that we have shown you earlier that if established then send uh, uh, then send data or um, if established then receive data. And uh, uh, after this uh, connection established state then uh, after this data transfer is over uh, say you want to uh, move to the uh, connection closer state you want to close that connection. Now, whenever you are wanting to close that connection the client can initiate the connection that particular connection we call it as an active close uh, 
uh, because the connection uh, uh, closure is initiated by the connection uh, by the client and for the server who is receiving that finish message fin message we call that as the passive close so we have seen that earlier now in case of active close the client send an um, client execute the close primitive and send the fin message so whenever it has seen send the fin message it moves to this fin wait one state then after sending this fin message you think of the connection release phase from the client to the server you have sent a fin message after sending a fin message there are two possibilities one possibility is that you get a fin plus ack and the second possibility is that the client and the server the client has sent the fin message and it is not getting an ack uh, it is it is not getting a fin it is just getting the ack so if it if it is this case that you are not getting the finish from the server that means the server is believing that it has more data to send you just receive an acknowledgement message and you move to the fin wait 2 state from fin wait 1 state because you have not received the fin plus act now if you are receiving the fin plus act message uh, after receiving uh, this fin plus act message you go to this time wait state so you remember that for the active connection uh, active closure we have this timeout value where after receiving this uh, fin plus act you wait for a timeout value once the timeout happens then you uh, clear the connection so it moves to this timeout state similarly in this fin wait state it has received the acknowledgement but it was waiting for getting the fin from the server once it get this fin from the server it sends that act and moves to the time wait state now there can be another case like uh, it has sent a fin message uh, to the server but without getting an act it has received another fin message from the server itself so it is a case case of so this case is a simultaneous closure case where the client has sent a fin message to the server and server has sent another fin message to the client without sending the act so that means the server is believing that it has more data to receive so in that case the client moves to the closing state um, uh, by sending an act so you get the finish message because you are anyway ready to finish so you send that acknowledgement message and um, move to this closing state in this closing state you are basically waiting for the acknowledgement from the server for this finish message that you have sent now after that if the server sends this acknowledgement message to you then you move to the timeout state and after the timeout occurs you move to the close state in case of passive close things are pretty simple that you are in the close wait state because you have uh, received the fin message and you have sent back with an acknowledgement message and um, in the pa passive wait uh, state you finally make a close call so the server here is making a close call uh, here you sent your own fin message server is sending its own fin message and waiting for the last acknowledgement message so once it server gets the last acknowledgement message it uh, close the connection and again it goes back to the initial state that is the starting of the connection so this is the entire state transition diagram of tcp the important aspect here is this time wait state that means uh, after getting the final acknowledgement in case of uh, the active close the node which is initiating the closure it will wait for certain timeout duration and once the timeout occurs then only it will close the connection and another interesting state is this closing state where uh, you have sent a fin message to the server but rather than getting an acknowledgement you have received a fin message from the server so it is just like that um, you want to close the connection the server also wants to close the connection but server is not immediately acknowledging because it has a belief that it may receive some more data or it is waiting for some other processing uh, so these are the two interesting steps here in case of connection closure and uh, this connection closure is uh, um, interesting because here our objective is to prevent the data loss as much as possible um, um, because because of uh, a result of this uh, impossibility principle that we talked earlier with the example of this two army problem that if you have an unreliable channel then over that unreliable channel you will be never be succeed to have a protocol of simultaneously closing the connection or getting a 
consensus over this uh, uh, unreliable channel uh, if, if the system is uh, asynchronous. So, we need to go for this uh, synchronous uh, closure and in case of synchronous, synchronous closure to prevent the data loss as much as possible TCP has taken these steps and uh, in this particular steps uh, the interesting part is this timeout uh, for active closure that once all the things is over the node which is initiating for the closure it waits for certain amount of time. Once the timeout occurs they close it, but for the passive close you do not require the timeout because for the passive close the other end has already closed the connection. So, you know that it is not going to send any more data to you. Uh, so, this is the entire uh, connection modeling uh, part of uh, TCP protocol and uh, in the next class uh, we will look into the flow control algorithm. So, this connection establishment it has helped you to set the initial sequence number. So, once this initial sequence number has been established then you can use that initial sequence number. So, you are at the established state and with that established state and the initial sequence number that has been agreed upon uh, during the connection establishment phase you can use that for uh, further data transfer using your flow control algorithm. So, in the next class we will look into that flow control algorithm in details. Thank you all for attending this class.